on. Transition complete. You're up. What? And then we're talking over Carol, yeah. <laughs> this is the part where whoever's in charge is supposed to start. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, what? No joke from Blake? Jeez, you know. So, hi, everyone. Welcome to Between the Rolls. I currently have an erection. I referred to it as the light switch earlier. There you go. There's a And they wonder why Frank needs a night off every once in a while. <laughs> hey, what well, I said, welcome to Between the Rolls. Total Inc. attempt at a talk show. Uh, let's see, of course, the usual housekeeping, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube. You feel free to buy our stuff. We got some cool merch. Debate covers, it's really true. Towels, t-shirts and hoodies and all sorts of cool things. At and Tiny tattoos. Let me show you. It's right next to my scrotum. <laughs> That's your jail tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least we know everyone saw it. You can get <laughs> Frank was here, uh, murder hobos, your choice. So it's all it Frank is here. Day, by the way, folks, and in case anyone did not see the placard, this is for mature audiences only because God knows someone has to be around here. So it's not us. Um, and the other thing I want to mention too, we mentioned and mentioned the shop. Well, there's something not in the shop you can't buy, and that would be dice. But we're giving some away. Uh, basically, we're doing a dice giveaway on Twitter. Uh, you need to follow us and then find the contest tweet and retweet it, and that's it. And then on Saturday, uh, a winner will be drawn. And the winner will be announced on the show Saturday night during the campaign at some point. So, yay! yay. So cool dice, and they are cool dice. Uh, I, I said I saw. I'm like, geez, I'd like to win them, but I don't think Did we're. The producer make them? What's that? Did the producer make them? I say I'm pretty sure that the producer made both of them, or the just the D20. And so, just because the producer made them, that does not say anything about the quality. I love my dick dice. No, they look really. They look. They look really cool. I, I thought they were. They're, they're really neat. They're light green. Um, so, now without further ado, I'm gonna let's see. Let's let the panelists introduce themselves. Uh, I will start with Blake, who should be in the upper. The upper right hand square. Go ahead, Blake. Tell everybody who you are, even though I already did. Uh, I'm Blake. <laughs> it's so much fun to be the moderator of this show. All right. And then we have Kyle. Introduce yourself if you want, even though I already did. So, uh, uh, is anyone else muting their mics so that they don't actually talk over Carol as she hosts? Because I can't stop talking. All right. Hi, my name is Kyle. The letter today is Y. Y is for yes, which all DMs should say. Yay. Oh my God, what book is that? Is that my first DM book? No, it's uh, my son's favorite book. Oh my gosh, that is adorable. Yes, oh, he's already ripped off half the pages. <laughs> I've heard of that book. And then, what is and then with next the pages, after Kyle? me is Scott. Scott, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm doing. I want to mute my. No, wait, don't go away, Kyle. <laughs> Scott, go ahead. He's quiet. Uh, he's never really quiet. I can hear him in my head all the in time. No, um, I'm Scott. <laughs> I'm, I'm a I'm a demon, a player, um, and uh, yeah, I'm happy to be here and uh, happy to talk um, as I like that <laughs> talking. So 
I guess I should introduce myself. My name is Carol. And I'm our host tonight is Carol, and I'm going to introduce her because she introduced everyone else. Carol's our favorite person who likes to talk. However, because everyone else also likes to talk, we're going to talk over. Carol, why don't you introduce yourself? <laughs> yeah, I know. Whenever you're ready, Carol, just start talking so we can well, talk know, over you. and then talk louder than you can. Hi, I'm, I said, my name is Carol. I'm a commission mini painter, longtime gamer, occasional GM, and first time host of this podcast, or any other for that matter. So, <coughs> so I guess let's get to. Uh, well, before we start, what? Uh, since the, we did have the children's book, remember, this is Murder Hobo Inc. telling you have your kids spayed or neutered. <laughs> and have them. But at an early age, they never ask why. Have them and have them far, far away from this podcast. It said it's for mature audiences only, and not for their ears, uh, unless who knows. Um, all right, so let's get into the first part of our evening, which of course is discussing what happened last Saturday. <clears throat> so you know what? Because Blake seemed to be a black. Uh, box on the screen for the first half hour so I think I'm going to ask Scott to do the recap so Scott That's take because it away. I was naked <laughs> hmm. he was he was naked running up around the street and it was really kind of funny because we all could see he must and it was have strange because I heard he was walking back from the store at the time yep naked walking back from the store naked <laughs> That's why it was do that in his I was to play, not arrested well, you know, this time. But uh, anyway, yes, um, a recap of the show. Okay, so for me, it was really interesting because I got to play Eric Hall, who's my, my favorite person to play. And um, I was also drinking. Um, and I think I was coherent maybe through the first 30 minutes. That's and after right. that, I really, I really don't, I well, mean. Wait, wait, let's go. Give the recap for the first 30 minutes and I'll Blake do the rest because you weren't he wasn't there for the first 30 and you weren't there for the last okay. hour and a half. So 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 that, that that's fair. So um so we kind of started off in uh Cathaway. Um we were tired, we were trying to find a place to rest. Um we were hungry. That was the th thing as we hadn't eaten, we were hungry, we were a little bit down on our uh down our spells and hit points and things like that. So we're trying to get into a Cathaway to find a place to eat. Uh, there was a like a Richie Richie place that didn't want us to go there. And there was another place we were trying to get to. We got stopped by some people um, and I didn't want to be stopped. Uh, everyone else kind of came behind me and left me all by myself. Uh, and then uh, right as we were trying to defuse the situation, um, our uh, very emo um, person, I, for I forgot uh, who, what the name of the character he was playing. Shoot. Um, I know it was Ernie, but but I forgot the name of the character he was playing. Um, we uh, he decided to start shooting arrows at them. Fight ensued. We uh, we uh, won that fight. Uh, although that's the time that Perpetua joined us, and there was a little bit of confusion about Perpetua joining us as like a friend or an enemy, or that that was kind of confusing you, you there for a minute. Because that was prudence. Uh, that's you were prudence. It's not Perpetua, yeah. That's right, Perpetua. You're prudence. I'm sorry. So we uh, we finally get get ourselves all together. We go to the bar. We go to a restaurant, I should say. We first go to one bar, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, they 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 don't like us, um, and we get booted out. Um, and then anyway, we ended up at this other place. And um, right, it left out the fact that one of the people, I think, it was one of the people there tried to hit on you. So maybe yeah, you're no, I I intentionally <laughs> left that part out. I thought yeah. I, I, I left that part out. Um, Come on, we all know Frank's amazing, amazing flirtation <laughs> skills. That's right. We do know this. It was we we do know this that that this is, this is known. Oozes, oozes out of this. More, more like just seeps. Yeah, dribble, dribbles. <laughs> and spurts sometimes. Spurts. Um, anyway, God, that's just terrible. So uh, we, uh, we we make it to the restaurant. We uh, eat some cod. 
Uh, we get bumped into a little bit. And basically, from what I understand, kind of just this long, prolonged bar fight ensues. That's that's kind of what happens is you just have like this, like, I don't want to call it a comedy of errors, but you just have this one thing happens to another. and People end up fighting and we don't really know why we're fighting or what we're fighting, but we're all drunk and well, and then I'm drunk. And then uh, and then the cops burst in and we're trying to figure out what's going on. I think I'm defending someone's honor, but I'm really just being an annoying ass. Um, and then uh, and then we try to find out this little birdcage. that got stuck up someone's ass. I mean, I don't know. It was after that point, I was three sheets to the wind. So, hey, Blake, do you want to fill in some details? I got Blake. stabbed in the tit. <laughs> the tit. Stabbed in the tit. I think he yeah. was defending your honor, actually, if I recall. Indeed he was, because I was basically face-palmed by a, uh, a rather surly-looking fellow who was there trying to do a shakedown on on uh, someone that had had this birdcage that was mentioned, this small magical item, uh, that was intercepted while I was trying to identify it, because instead of bringing it to me, uh, Big Mike decided to do the Hail Mary pass across the bar. And uh, guess what Frank likes doing? Having short people come up and grab shit. Yeah. So, yes, it was intercepted. Uh, He was small enough that I was not essentially able to get him to relinquish it. Uh, Went to go find him. Almost got hit by the door. Got stabbed in the tit. uh, Reciprocated. He had like 100-something hit points, and I was just burning through and flicked wounds on this dude. Uh, and uh, ultimately, I ended up having to go uh, feel up the tavern owner's kid. And uh, you kicked him in the chest or something like that. You beat the crap early, out of some kid. Early, yeah, early, early football punch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. So I went to go and investigate. I was seriously looking for the bird cage on him because I was in, I was aware that it was a smaller individual. I thought the kid was being cheeky, but I ended up being father feel good. Yeah. Any any other thoughts from the Good two memories. as the players or? Uh, well, it was one of the things was we were just a little backstory. That was not the scenario that was intended to be run. That was literally a spur right. of the moment scenario uh, that we came up with. Well, by we I mean Frank primarily came up with within ten minutes of going going live because I was out running errands when I was told that they needed someone to fill in. So, uh, kind of came up with all of that on the fly, and uh, we didn't get a whole lot accomplished, but it felt like there was a lot going on, and at the end of the day, that's what I thought was important. Well, it, it was also a lot of fun. I mean, I, 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 I really did enjoy Ernie's character playing this emo character that didn't really care until something got interesting. I thought that was hilarious. I, I really liked that, uh, and um, because it's just, uh, it's just an interesting play. And then I, 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 like I said, I do like playing Eric Hall because he, uh, he, he gets to play a, a certain ridiculousness, and um, and and that's what I kind of like a little bit about him is that he can be ridiculous. My uncle is the right. attorney. You're going to have to relinquish me, officer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Kyle, did you actually watch this? I watched the beginning of it, and then I was distracted. You have kids that wouldn't surprise me, so I actually I well, they're all in the refrigerator. You know, you <laughs> you do the prep work ahead of time. You put the kids in the oven, close it, roast it for an hour, and you set it and forget it. You know, they're off for you dimmer. As I said, you know, they always say that there's a little bit of yourself in all of your characters, but we can definitely see Kyle is in Joffrey Dimmer. Yeah, I also uh, put a little bit of you in everything did. that you cook. That's why I stick twice in every dish. I actually did watch the, or, or I listened to the whole thing, because as usual, I do, when I'm not in them, I tend to uh, listen to them at work. over them. <laughs> I listen to the podcast at work, and uh, all I can think of is there's probably no better group that can handle technical issues uh, than this one, because we are... We essentially are the comedy, you know, we're like, I, I keep thinking Grand Tour, you know, like, um, or I can't remember what that was a show before. Um, you know, the 
Grand Tour is basically the one where the three British guys talk about cars and they do all this crazy stuff. And basically, they spend most of the time picking on each other, sabotaging each other. And that's why, for some reason, I keep comparing this show to that one. <laughs> Um, but basically when we have like, like, you know, when I first turned it on, there's only Frank and Scott and the other three things were all black. And I'm like, oh, that's a good start. And I just started laughing. I'm like, you know what? That's just par for the course for this group. And it works. I think it actually works. So, and then it just, it was just funny the whole thing was just it was really it was fun to listen to it always is but this one you know with that start and and i saw you at the beginning uh blake so i was like huh i wonder where you disappeared to which well, i do yeah I, 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 oh, there, was there was technical issues i had intended to come back but there, the computer was decided windows decided it was time for an update and like oh, it oh. happened to me and the other thing i thought of too uh Apparently, you know, we just love Mike's dice, love him as much as mine love me because he had that spider climb up the wall and then promptly rolled and fell off the wall. And I could think of, hey, that's what happened to me two weeks ago out of the crow's nest when I tried I don't even to fucking remember that. I don't know. When did someone climb up a wall? <laughs> I don't remember that at all. That's all I can like, oh my God. Dicer is bad. And now we'd like to introduce our sponsor, Don Julio. <laughs> it gets the players so raging drunk. Yes, yeah, Scott. We're talking about. And I will say this, Scott. Who, yeah, I could, I could so tell at the end of that. You were so wasted. It was, but you're, it's funny. You're still like coherent and you still can play the game. Even <laughs> I, I was just waiting for him to put his arm, like say that he was going to put his arm around Ernie and say, "Let me tell you something." <laughs> I was, I was about to, I was about to say, "I'm going to put my arm around Ernie and say, I think I could fix all of your problems if you just, if if you just stick with me, kid. Just, just, just go ahead and stick with me." I you was, know, I was going to. Oh, I'm sorry. Scott, go is that why you play a character with a speech impediment so that when you're hammered, no one will know the difference? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. Don't never do that. him like that. that. How <laughs> dare you? It's, it's, it's trade knowledge. Oh my God. So, you know, Scott, you need to play, you need to create a new character that's just a rip roaring drunk. That's all I can say. So, you know, as I said, all of your care, all of your characters, your best characters have a bit of yourself inside. So, you really right. need. A ripper and drunk who's always drunk on Don Julio. Hashtag Don Julio. Do you have letters? Start the show rip roaring drunk <laughs> and just go from blackout to there. Actually, actually, no, wait, that's a really bad idea. Thank I mean, you. I, it is sorry. actually pretty bad. Idea. How the hell do these headsets fit on? Okay, so, wow, anyway. I said, I would get on where somebody that were one of the players in a, I mentioned it, a drinking and dragons game. He started before and promptly ended up passed out on the floor. So, no, don't do that. Um, all right. So, that's the little rundown of the crazy episode that happened last Saturday. Um, so, then we let's get to the actual topic at hand, which is <coughs> tight spaces, or in other words, you don't need a mega dungeon to have fun. Um, oftentimes you can run a, a full adventure in a small space. That's basically just a room. So um, I'm, going to, I'm going to let the, the tight space joke just sit in the air for a second. <laughs> oh, it's, yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. I wasn't the only one who thought, I knew you would all think of that too. <laughs> All right. I just What's wanted Blake space? to be the one to say it. That's all. Just, you know, that's all. Like my asshole. <laughs> Jesus Christ. My wife has had two kids. I don't know what a tight space is. <laughs> go go off-road. You know, I bet, you'll, I bet you'll find one. All right. So it has to be. Hey, you know what? It's, uh, it's, it's 820, and I've officially lost control. But usually that's oh. better than Frank. So uh, I'll say it. Is. So, it is uh, much better. We're being nice. Really nice right now. <clears throat> hey. 
So we'll go around the horn and I want everybody, you know, if you could share a thought or two on what you think about using um, this concept. What was it? I can't remember what he wrote on Twitter. Concept or, um, I don't remember. Oh, what one, they, room, uh, one room motif. Uh, no, it wasn't, but Frank actually had like this witty way of, you know, con I can't remember what the other thing, it was like a bad term. I don't remember what it was. All right, but anyways, uh, Blake, why don't we start with you? Uh, I got a million reasons. Um, but uh, so pros and cons of a uh, single, because we have to reiterate the question specifically for Kyle. So the pros and cons of developing a certain adventure uh, or, a, or a, a, a session in, in a uh, confined location, uh, <coughs> I like it and I dislike it. Um, one of the things is that you, you can go into it already populating it with the people that you know are going to be in there with the interactions that you know it has a very limited scope on what's available to your character to your players uh your players also know that so they know that you know it's going to be uh they, they're not going to have to think too far outside of the box there's there's going to be okay you're, you're you probably pretty much know what any given tavern church uh dungeon cell uh, wedding reception hall is going to have in it what's going to be available to them. You don't have to necessarily spend a lot of time describing it, but if you describe something specifically as being out of place, it's going to be noticed a little bit more, I feel like. Um, but it also encourages more social interactions, especially if you have a crowded uh, uh, area, like in this instance, a tavern. Uh, a lot of adventures start in the tavern, but they don't necessarily end up there. Uh, that's kind of something I think Frank had mentioned that he thought that was an unutilized concept, and I'd have to say that I agree with them. I'm going to have to take a shot for that in a second. Um, but it really does, uh, it, it, for someone who's just starting out, I would recommend something like that, because you can go and you can populate it. You can say that this is what happens. And there really isn't a whole lot there. There was nothing keeping us there, but we didn't necessarily want to leave. I mean, the only time that something was keeping us there was once I went to the door. Uh, so it was it, it, done properly. It can still be very engaging and very uh, entertaining gameplay. It certainly was. Uh, uh, it, it, it was certainly something like I, like I I think like I mentioned, like it didn't feel like we did anything but we were before i knew it i'm like shit I'm like, hey you know what that's how a lot of murder hobo wing scenarios go we don't really do much of anything but lots of shit happens so at least that's uh, yeah, yeah i'm like I, I usually do a lot of shit but it's changing into people and running away all right <laughs> and, blame, uh, and blaming Karen. all right i'm gonna go to scott next Okay, so um, I'll, I'll echo um, Blake's comments that I, there are positives and negatives, good things um, um, and bad things. The good things I like is that confined spaces uh, give a chance for better, whether it be a tavern or an inn or um, maybe a single layer. Um, and and I'll, I'll use the tavern and inn as your more uh, common area that you're going to say. Um, it gives a strong opportunity for good role playing to happen as you interact with NPCs that may or may not be, but most of the time, if you're in an urban setting, are not going to be openly hostile, although you can get them that, that, that way relatively quickly. Uh, so that's the positive is that you have a chance to have good, you have, to, you have a chance to have good, um, um, good role playing. Uh, the negative that can come from is that if combat does come out of it, um, it's hard to keep things in control because you're in public space. Um, you have consequences of casting high level spells. You have guards, you have uh, collateral damage. Um, you have uh, things that can uh, happen that you're not really trying to intend. So it's, it's difficult to control from the DM perspective, but it's a good opportunity for role play. That's my first pass at, uh, at uh, understanding what some of the positives and negatives are from having a confined space. All right, and Kyle? 
Oh, Kyle. I'm here. I'm trying to remember the question because you made me last. And I just went like a trade and spell that God damn it. Pros and cons of con using confined spaces in uh, to run in a whole adventure in. Uh, your cons are if your players figure out they're in a confined space, <laughs> they're going to try and break free as much as possible. I mean, if you make a road Depending with on dangerous trees on either side, they're going to try and cut their way through. And so one of the things you have to do is put enough into the tavern, have enough in it, or if we're speaking specifically taverns, um, I know there's a lot of other things on this list, but you have to make it seem like, yeah, you can leave any time you want to, but why would you? Or you can do the really cheap, dirty trick and put them on the boat in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> hey, you're in free open space. You can go wherever you like. I hope you know how to swim for miles. That's why I wanted that ring of water walk on that bitch. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh, in which case, um, a, con a confined space doesn't necessarily have to be the tavern or anything like that. It can be on a ship. It can be uh, a, a, a caravan, something where, yeah, you've been hired to go and travel with this wagon. But if you get off, the wagon's still going to go without you, and... You're not going to get paid. Exactly. So, and so there's got to be tricks and ways to certainly make it feel like it's its own entity that a character, your players, want to explore, or they can look out the window and see something amazing. Oh, there's a... Or, or see that it's not any more interesting outside. <laughs> Or yeah. see that it's not any more interesting outside. I was going with the ship thing and be like, yeah, your boat gets jumped by a sky whale. I don't know. I, I haven't thought about it that land, much. Land shark. Land shark. Land or, shark, yes. In the middle of the of, ocean. <laughs> ship full of goblin pirates. Oh. Uh, okay, so um, actually, you sort of started in on basically my next question or topic that's really this I was going to have you each pick one on the list or your own creation and talk about how you would uh, how you would utilize such a space do so you know what Kyle since you have memory issues I'll start with you Kyle my wife is asking me what I would like to eat so what was oh, the question fine. what a good wife you the four year old or the six year old the four year old <laughs> You gotta go. Yep, four is question. tender, but I like a good aged meat. I like a, some yellow fat, some muscle to really start building. Uh, I know, but listen, you, you gotta be sure. your age, otherwise it gets tough. Oh my God, you, you, are you gonna remember the question, Kyle? I actually now <laughs> forgot the question for real this time. <laughs> uh, but you want me to pick pick something. Uh, one of those things, and how would you utilize it in a in your own um, confined areas adventure? Oh, uh, like the scenarios and everything. Yeah, or, or we said, or yeah, how would you just in? Uh, of course, we don't have all night, so. Sure. Yeah. No. No. Uh, uh, Frank was confused by my survival scenario, so what I was going to say is. Well, no, um, no. Next no. Part. Like pick all right, which one of like taverns or inns or whatever? Give, give, give it, well, how would you create a confined scenario? Give yeah, an example with, one. with one of like the various places, you know, like the type, you know, the ship or or a small cave or all of these we've actually done not too long ago. <laughs> yeah, jail. So yeah. how would I create it? Uh, give an example of one that you might. Would you like would you like me to go to somebody else? Go to like, somebody else, sure. Wait, go ahead. Because I'm confused yeah. now. You you lied to me. I have been fooled. And I don't appreciate <laughs> it. Blake, this is your go first ahead time, first. So shame on you. True. <laughs> All right, Blake, go ahead. Uh, I'll go ahead. And I'm actually going to go back. And I'm, I'm pulling one off the list. And I was, I, uh, the uh, Madame Zoloft is the one that I was interested in because, uh, I'm going to relate this back to Perpetua and the and the gypsy woman in the in the cart that she was on. It was a wide open sandbox. We were there was absolutely nothing confining us there. But I essentially spent a an entire session 
uh, interacting with this gypsy woman and her magical cats and her traveling carnival's worth of various goods and sundry items. Uh, and Frank is informing me that I'm welcome for that. And I'm like, no, you're welcome that I'm using an example that you've made. But uh, uh, there was enough going on with her. There was enough uh, described. There was, like I said, a whole forest's worth of stuff. I could have gone literally fucking anywhere. I was not under any obligation to uh, interact with her, stay in her vicinity. Uh, in fact, I had kind of pretty much set out to avoid as many people as possible. Um, but just having one feature of, or, or, or one area of interest, one point of interest in, an, in a sea of nothing is a good way of going about that. I think instead of trying to confine people in, you just have them isolated where there isn't anything else to do. Yeah, you can go ahead, walk on for another three weeks. It's desert from here to the sea. Um, but I would have, you know, and, and one of the things that I discussed with Frank afterwards was I had, I, I could very easily have gone on for two hours just with my engagement with her, with that one, with that one NBC and that one scenario and that one situation, just as we were traveling together. Uh, cause I cut a lot of what I wanted to do out for time. I, I said all the stuff that Perpetual wants to talk her about this. She wants to do that. She wants to do that. She wants to hear what she has to say about this. I'm curious to see how we resolve that kind of thing. So uh, bringing it back around to how you might have a group of people doing that, uh, I would make sure that each character has <coughs> someone to interact with uh, so that they're not trying to basically like jostle for attention of the one NPC. You know, the one hooker doesn't want to sit there and give 18 toss jobs in one evening. You got to have at least four of them to go ahead and, you know, okay, so they can take turns. Um, but that, that is something that is how I would typically approach something like that is I would make it so that they're in an open environment and don't have anything else to do. So you trap them with basically nothing. I trap them with themselves. That's yeah, that's, I think that is a perfectly valid tactic to, um, make, make that in and I, I I totally I totally get your point too because yeah that was very interesting to to watch too. Um all right are you anything else or is that that good? Uh, uh, I may I may have an interjection towards the end but uh, just off the okay. top of my head that, that that was specifically what I wanted to focus on was that I was I was very intrigued by this. It was a very interesting concept. <laughs> it was it was a character that had a lot of backstory that's it seems like Frank had put some time into. Yeah, uh, there, were, there, there was a lot of there, there were a lot of interactions possible, and I know I didn't touch on half of them. So, just because I was there for thirty minutes or an hour or whatever, doesn't mean that uh, doesn't doesn't mean that I ran the well dry. So I, I thought that that was a very good way of approaching that. You know what? Uh, Frank said he made it up in a drunken haze, but and that's, I know that that's a joke because he was making fun that's of Scott. Probably good for that. He was, Actually, making, he was he was making fun of Scott. Yeah, but also, but also, I also think he made it up before because he has apparently uh, his free scenario this month on Drive Through RPG is Madame Zoloft, so um, which I believe is on the Gypsy Wagon. So there you go. We'll tie it in for a little pitch for our buddy there, uh, Scott. What would you take off that list, and how would you utilize it? Um, I don't know. Uh, before I go, um, Kyle, do you have a preference? Because I don't want to take what you were thinking about. <laughs> uh, honestly, what I was going to mention, and so why I should probably go last, is that I would really honestly use the scenario to define where the location takes place. And since we're okay. not supposed to talk about scenarios right now, well, I'll that. wait till the fucking end, Carol. You're okay. welcome. I am nothing but a gracious guest. 
Oh, good girl. You're welcome. You don't even want to go until the next session where we talk about this. You can't even pick something off the list and tell me how you'd use it. That's yeah, ask me how I would use it, and it's like, oh, okay. So what's the scenario for this space? Well, you, admit, well, you have to well, build stuff, Folks, I think there's a rerun of The Simpsons on on the UPN. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, when all right, so Frank gives me the, the topics, and basically he has two sections. One, he has types of restricted adventuring, and so there's a list of like real specific buildings and such, you know. Uh, and I actually had to to like a tavern or family crypt or so on and so forth. And then he has scenarios for smaller settings, which to me are bigger, uh, slightly bigger areas, but. Also, yeah, also, well, actually, it's like survival, siege, warfare, you know, things like that. And to me, that's kind of its own topic. But as I said, I was... Hey, I, hey, know, hey, but, trade secrets again, trade secrets. I know, well, hey, you know, I'm just trying to explain why it's all... Why apparently Kyle is confused. So... Okay, so I'll uh, I'll go ahead and uh, um, um, give my two cents on this. I will probably do a crypt. That, that would be one of my more favorite areas to go because I think it's a nice confined space. And I'm thinking like a, like a family mausoleum, um, no more than maybe like 50 feet wide, uh, 50 feet long. So we're looking at a 50 by 50 and you're basically, you know, trying to retrieve a family heirloom that's been put in a, um, um, you know, crypt recently buried and you're trying to sneak in. And what I like about that is, you know, there's a, there's a, you know, people are going to be expecting some type of undead. People are going to be expecting some type of um, uh, miniature revenant. Yeah, and I, I, yeah, right. I love revenants, um, but uh, nice big op revenant. Uh, no, but I, what I would probably do is I would have a nice confined space fight inside a crypt, where basically what you find out is that other people want this this uh, this heirloom or this magical, whatever it needs to be. And you're in a nice tight space and you're competing against different rival gangs that are trying to get into this crypt and steal this item. And I, and what I like about that idea is, you know, it's really hard to get in because there's not, not going to be that many ways to get in. Um, and then you're going to have some fairly close combat fighting um, you know, you don't really want to disturb, so there's no big high-powered spells. I think you can throw some fairly <laughs> unique spatial challenges at the party, and as a DM, I like to do that. You know, I, I like to find ways to challenge a party, not just to throw a fireball or a, or a you know, cloud kill when you're in these areas um, that, that you think you can get away with that. So I would try to use the environment to make it another NPC in essence, that the player characters not only fighting the NPCs, but they're fighting the environment and the constraint that they're in. And that's how I would probably do that. Like layer actions. So, I don't know. So, um, hey, thanks for coming over with a good answer there, Scott. Ow, Cal, I, I would like to chime in, to chime in on, on, on the end of that, though. Uh, like, like what you were saying, it, it, it I, I would also almost want to say that it would make your players a little bit more conscientious of their environment and their consequences as a result of it. Because if you're out, right. out in a place where there's a hundred fucking buildings, if they want to fireball one of them, burn it to the ground, they can go to a different one. If in this particular instance, I would say that they probably don't want to raise this thing to the ground because the authorities are going to come. They're going to be exposed as grave, grave robbers. They're going to have an unsuccessful time. It, I, They're I, I, on a I, boat. I, I think the boat. I have a ring of water. water. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, I would say that it does make your players a little bit more conscientious of how they act. It encourages them to act a little bit more. So Kyle, do you have anything to add, or you just want to start in the other section? Oh, oh come on! Everyone's already started in the section there. Um, sort of, but. Talking about any scenario, honestly, either of the place fits. The things you have to think about, though, are like Scott said, um, what's the part, what's special about the building, the ship, the cart, whatever itself that makes it dangerous, that makes the players have to pause, think, and consider their actions because that's drawing players in, that's investing them. And then, same thing with how uh, uh, Blake 
I was about to say Perpetua, um, uh, <laughs> phrased Madame Zoloft, where you have interesting NPCs that they are fleshed out enough that you can spend two hours talking to. And a combination of those things is really going to help. And I think maybe even Blake touched on something even earlier, knowing what's in the space, which I guess kind of goes with what up. Know the space, know what's in it, people in it, dangers that the party is most likely going to occur. And other than that, almost every single place is the same in that aspect. You got to think about those three things, in my opinion. That's fair. That's fair. All right. So basically, I said I was trying, basically, with this, I was trying to throw ideas out to people and how we would use them. And actually, I will give people the list. And if they want a handy reference on how these things were used, or a lot of them, um, I'll even give you episodes and stuff where we we actually ran these sort of scenarios. So, obviously, the tavern in single building or tavern that was last Saturday, uh, last Saturday's episode was all in a tavern. Oh, don't forget about low level wizards. They're not cool enough to have extra dimensional spaces in their wizard towers yet. So you know. They That's have pretty true. lame towers. So, lame towers. Um, let's see. Uh, the gypsy wagon, that was, it said, obviously, of Blake. Uh, we saw that in the campaign when it was Blake in my week. And also, I threw down, I put down a tower. Uh, both Blake and I actually ended up at different towers. Um, and basically, you could have had event, basically, I'll call it an adventure because. I, I showed up at a fishing hut. What's that? I was in a fishing hut. Oh, you were in a fishing hut. I just remember you were in looking, you were look, You were actually in a place with that, the flail I snail. Was looking, I was looking for a permanent elephant's library. Right, all right, so fishing hut. I was in a tower, um, and I had a combat, and I'm planning on going back and looking to see if there's any paperwork or anything of interest. So, you know, that to me is more than one um, particular it's it's it, it it can be you can do a whole in fact you could do a whole venture just in a tower um and without extra dimensional spaces and that was not a wizard's tower either uh let's see and i mentioned let's Urban see, renewal. The, the ship we did was the one shot from two weeks ago where we were all stuck on a ship and we ended up getting rammed by goblin pirates and my poor character the walk the plank at the end um, uh, a small, I've actually added in the small cave. Obviously, that's also from the campaign when we went and took out the demon in Fink Mine. I mean, you could have other chambers and stuff too, but that was once again, and we had role play, and we had it was more than just that one fight. Well, and, and even just to throw another example out, go watch the show that we did on adventure creation based on a map. Yeah, hmm. that was a pretty, yeah, pretty small one there. Yeah, that's true. Um, so those are the ones, and then actually I threw in one of my own. I did. I actually did a, a night where the PCs had to go into a library. So basically it all happened in this one area within the library, and they had to find a book, and there was a rival, uh, there was a rival group who had an interest in this book that wanted to use it for no good. So the PCs are basically getting it to put it in a safe spot. Um, where this other group would not find it. And so they had to had basically had that sort of an encounter for them to find it. And then, of course, it was a fight with the other group because naturally they showed up. Um, so so there's some examples of, you know, the particular places like that. But then we'll get to the thing that Kyle mentioned. And I definitely want to know, we're not too sure what you mean by survival, Kyle, but it's a scenarios for smaller settings. So, Kyle, what do you mean by survival? Hmm? What do you mean by survival? I'm actually to your part. What do you mean by a, a survival scenario? Oh, which is yeah. essentially just uh, overcomplicating the siege, essentially. Um, my idea would be to... Newer DM here, uh, which is why I come up with amazing creative ideas and why I'm so great at it 
But honestly, I would probably still need to force PCs into a confined space. I'd have to get them to where they can't leave because I don't make interesting enough NPCs. Um, but a scenario I would do is probably, um, and I've heard this somewhere, uh, where a stray shadow um, gets let loose in a town. Mm-hmm. And as you know, sh- I, shadows are wraiths, one of the others. But where it kills someone and the person who's dead comes up and they become a shadow. And if you have a village just full of shadows, it becomes a horrible. That's scary. And right? That's scary as fuck. Well, are horrible. Yeah. But the idea is that your tavern, your bar is the place who stays open late. Everyone else goes to bed. They get killed, get raised. And they come to the one place where there's still living people, the bar. Uh, and my idea for that is that we'll say that shadows can't step into a room with really bright light. And so now you have this tavern where the people have somehow been warned about the shadows. And now they have to pay attention to the chairs they have. They have to keep the fires going all throughout the night if they want a chance at survival. It's where all the clerics go to get shit faced. So they're just constantly casting light. None of them can see. <laughs> I'm bringing a paladin to that scenario. Jeez. You know yeah. that, that that actually brings up, uh, I, I think, a really good, a really good scenario that that could be almost horror based. Oh yeah. Right? Oh, yeah I'll be honest. I've, I've been reading of cricket bats. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. the thing is, inside a horror thing, space and tight spaces become become even more eerie and they become even more more pervasive in the amount of horror and dread that they can that they can spread and speaking of shadows shadows move by identifying the casting of other shadows they move from shadow to shadow so there's all sorts of nice environmental effects that you can have and uh um i don't have any Beer or Tom Julio here, but that's a good idea, Colin. So I owe you one. Okay, uh, uh, no, I'm not drinking. Tonight. I know you're I not drinking tonight. I appreciate I love the idea of a horror-based, you know, one shot where space and environment really play a critical, a critical, critical role. I, I you know, remember. one of the things you can do on top of that is, you know, Blake mentioned, you know, the clerics are all casting light, but suddenly move this place over to a demiplane, like say. Uh, uh, the Ravenloft, the domains of dread, and you don't really have enough contact with your god in order to cast a cantrip like light. It's not, it's not bright enough. A fire well, might work. Well, and I'm picturing something too. You, you said one shot, uh, Scott, and I think that even playing off of that to get full effect of that, have that be a side quest in your main adventure. So that mm. these are characters that your players are actually invested in and yeah. have even further play up that horror aspect yeah. because they have Stop a vested giving, interest in not God. letting them die. Stop giving Frank ideas. He'll throw it in the campaign. <laughs> no, I think that's a great idea. It's a really good idea. Just a little, just a little horror sideshow for a little while. You know, you could start it off in a crypt and then uh maybe the party's actions wake something up a shadow like you mm-hmm. say yeah. then they retire back to town to their tavern and uh you know for a well-deserved rest after a successful while, 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 while they <laughs> yeah brother you know oh man that could just go all sorts of different ways that's 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 nice that's nice little tight two or three day two or three session side yeah. quest if you have more than just the tavern you know you have a couple rooms on it maybe there's a few people who fell asleep in the back they have it their rooms dark the shadows go in get them they come up as i don't know maybe somewhere. zombies and then you have these zombies shambling out of the halls going into the tavern and you have your fights there too yeah, uh, that yeah. your players were not expecting. <laughs> Fast zombies, yeah. Fast zombies, man, those are fun. All right, um, Blake, how about you? Um, how about going, you? Going, going back along that line, as far as scenarios go, because uh, I did, I did tend to focus on a on a situation that was more socially oriented. I, I would I would basically want to turn something like that into a game of clue. Uh, you know, I, I, if I were do, if I were doing something like a one shot, I would say, you know, okay, first of all, 
you're either a low enough low enough level cleric or no cleric slot, and they can't cast speed with you because that's a fucking rule breaker. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it isn't, but it's a pain in the ass. New DMs, if you're going to try and do as a murder mystery, don't use, don't allow clerics that are high enough to speak with the dead, unless you or are very very good at raise the dead so they can't be spoken to. I think works as well, but I don't recall. It, 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 it does, but that's assuming that they're. And just bring them back to life for funsies. Well, yeah, but if they're actually, we're assuming that not everyone playing is going to be a murder hobo and just try and, you know, okay, now I got zombies. Woo! <laughs> uh, <laughs> but no, I, I would, I, I very much like the idea of a social intrigue scenario where there's, there's, there's something that's occurring or there's something that they want. A murder ministry is a good way of putting it, it you know, is a good starting point. But we were even talking about for our, uh, our NPC uh, uh, show not terribly long ago when we were just essentially at a banquet. Uh, that would have all taken place in one room, one scenario. It would have been, you know, here are all of the NPCs that are available to them. They are trying to acquire information while ruling out red herrings uh, because there is something that they are going to have to decide at the end of the night or Face the consequences. You know, I'm, I'm almost picturing uh, a, a school, elementary school children playing uh, Town of Salem, where you know it's like, oh no, she's the witch. Or, or, but uh, I, I would try and focus more on uh, social interaction because you get plenty of. Okay, here's another situation for combat out in the wilderness while they're traveling. There's there's ample opportunity for that. When you have a, an area where you can define your NPCs, where you can plan ahead, where you can you know, come up with a couple different ways that you can go, but really play up the aspect that this is a potential for your players that want to roll L-O-R-E play, that this yeah. is an opportunity for that. All right. Scott, how about you? Was a well, list or your own scenario that works in this for a smaller scale thing well i i like the idea of you know if i'm gonna have a confined space i probably like you know crime solving uh a lot like an area of mystery um you know if kyle has the uh you know idea of a uh, you know almost horror in a way and um blake is thinking about you know political entry i would probably probably gear more towards the mystery type ideas that, you know, um, our, our group has been, uh, has been charged to, you know, solve a mystery of some, or, or maybe even clear their name. They're being framed and they have 24 hours to try to, uh, to try to clear their name by finding who is the real killer. So they have a set, number of locations that they can interact with certain people and they have to figure out what to do because if they can't in 24 hours you know then they're then they're about to be arrested uh and you know that's 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 the i probably try to do some type of crime mystery either they have either they're being either they're going to be paid a hell of a lot of money to find out who did something you know they're being hired as private investigators or they've been framed and they have 24 hours to clear their name. That's, and you're confined, right? Because you know that, you know, the answers to the question can only be solved in these three or four locations, right? In those three or four locations, you're gonna have to really interact with the people that you're talking with. So uh, you're really gonna have to do a lot of role playing. You're gonna have to ask them questions. You're gonna have to make intimidation, persuasion, deception, all those, checks that help to fill out a character, I, I think you need to bring those into the forefront when you're talking about, you know, confined spaces and and set scenarios within a small geographical area. That's how I'd probably do it. All right. So actually one of the things that on that list of like the scenario portion was the siege warfare. But I kept thinking, maybe not so much even the siege, but what we just did but the campaign kind of is thinking like what happened in courtroom drama. Welcome, welcome to Night Court. What's that? <laughs> court. Welcome to Night Court. The bailiff is a werewolf. Uh... 
No, all right. So, so anyways, I was going to say, I like the thought of the siege warfare type thing where um, you've got a small town. I, I was thinking like a town like the size of Fink, so it's not that big. Um, a really small town that's under siege from, hey, werewolves, why not? A whole troop of werewolves or, or whatever. I, I kind of like the thought of that. In some uh, way, I, I believe werewolves travel in packs. What's that? I believe werewolves travel in packs. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. You, know, yeah, you, said, you said herd. herd. Herd is cattle. These are pack animals. Okay, fine. Packs. Jeez. You know, I've had a long day at work today, so I didn't just goof off and write emails to you people all day, like some days when things are slow. Could have fooled us. But today I actually had a lot of, uh, and today I actually had a bit of work to do. So, um, but anyways, yeah, a pack of werewolves could come on the town. Yeah, you could be, and you're right. That's where the whole survival thing comes into play too. But um, so A and B is sort of, but I said, I, I do sort of like that scenario. And I said, in some ways I feel like we just ran away from that and think we were under siege by a dragon and a crazy war elephant. And maybe a bunch of chaos, but still, that's sort of. Uh, but, but for that, but for that whole episode, for that whole session, we were in that area. It was still your your goal exactly. can be escaped. That's why I was like. That's why, for some reason, even though it wasn't warfare per se, that's why for some reason the whole episode uh, popped into my mind. So. Um, you know what, since it's getting near nine o'clock, I think I'm gonna just cut right to final thoughts. I'll start with Scott. Okay. Oh. Sorry, Kyle, I know no, you, you love. Why, you do you, you the give the best final thoughts. I, I, I give best Hit us in the face final. with your final thoughts. Just <laughs> my spit final it out. thoughts, just put it right out there, just lay it on the table. Um, no, I, I like I, I, I've I've thought about you know how how to um, you know between the roles is a good way that 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 we try to impart some of our um, experiences playing together as a group that we have here as well as playing with the other friends that we have and then um, um, try to bring all that together. Confined spaces is an interesting one because. Um, Parties find themselves in confined spaces all the time, whether or not they're doing one shots or whether or not they're doing part of a campaign. As I said at the very start, I like confined spaces from the idea that you force your players to interact with their environment, to interact with the NPCs, and to interact with one another. Um, those are the parts I like. The parts I don't like is that if it's not handled correctly, uh, it can easily turn into a shit show and not in a good way. It turns into the type of shit show where the players don't know what they're doing, the DM gets confused, and no one has any fun. But luckily, when I play with these guys, I'm normally shit-faced, so I always have fun. Uh, All right. Why don't you go next? Um, <laughs> I remember my thought partially. Uh, uh, um, oh my God. I'm no, definitely we, probably do. Now what's that um, Michael J. Fox thing? I've heard memory issues are a result of that too. You oh should God. see me write my signature. It's great. <laughs> I thought, you know, I'm like old. <laughs> oh my God. Why is it I have a better memory than you? And I'm like almost 50. I'm a freaking old. I have children. <laughs> they suck the life out of you. All right. So what's your point anyway? So what's what's your final thought? Uh, so my final thought was, you know, if some of you uh, DMs out there who are thinking about running confined space, but have also seen some of these amazing set pieces that get thrown up around, this is honestly probably the best time to even get a start on that because your PCs are going to be in one area, why not draw them out a map? Why not actually take a little bit of time? If it's going to be your crime scene investigation, make clues along to go with your map. And shut up, Frank. It's in a single space, maybe two or three rooms, 
This is the perfect laziness to make a map. It looks, um, blue, it looks like Blue found a paw print. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> or if you are doing that siege scenario, if you have that map to be like, okay, here's the windows. I, you are shown all the spaces where the enemy is going to start pouring into this place. What are you doing? Uh, and they can be like, well, we'll take this table, bar it up against that window there. And that way there's no confusion uh, and if something is overlooked, you can honestly say, well, this is your fault, guys. It's not that I didn't describe the room well enough. I have it drawn out for you right here. And so a confined space might be a good place to actually start making a map, doing <clears throat> a little bit more physical if you're doing in-space um, um, role-playing. Otherwise, use Roll20 or one of those other things if you're playing online, but... But it's easy, not a lot of work. I lost my train of thought there, so I'm going to end. <laughs> That's okay. As I said, it's it's surprising. You should have more memory than I do. What? Uh, Blake, we'll go to you last. Well, I'm last, but I'll least. But Blake? Oh, no, no, I'm certainly least. But uh, actually, I'm going to come back to the point that I that we had actually kind of come up with in the, in the chat here was that if you do find yourself in one of these situations and you find yourself in a scenario that you hadn't planned for, uh, even though you are in a small area, don't be afraid to have us rule something. Uh, that can be, just because it's not written that way, as long as you can come up with a That's important. Explana explanation for something, your players will go along with it. Just, you can't, you either just can't be, no, I'm not going to let you do that. You can do that. But for some reason, it seems to not work. Uh, and that's just another, that just adds to the intrigue, adds to the scenario, adds to the specific intrigue of what you are creating uh, by essentially telling them that something that they could have done anywhere else can't be done here, makes your players invested. Uh, it makes them want to try and figure out why, because they want to know why they can't do it, because I can do it, I can do it anywhere else. So... Don't let yourself get too back into the corner. I think this is something that's good for someone who's starting out. And don't be afraid to uh, go back and uh, uh, improvise in order to accommodate what you have uh, created. So, good point. Um, and I will add to my final thought here. Um, a couple other things. I think a confined space is great. If you're looking for a scenario for a convention, you've got a four hour time limit or, you know, like we have a two hour time limit on our normal Saturday night one shot. So to me, that's why I think we do see a number of our episodes with this, this idea of a confined space. Um, because, you know, you don't have when you don't have a lot of time, you don't really have a lot of time to have PCs going uh, all over the world. You can, you just have to obviously compress things, but I think it makes it a little easier if you put it in a confined space. Or let's say somebody's going to be missing from your campaign for the night. It'd be a great, like, you know, one shot to cover the evening so you don't have to worry about, you know, them missing anything big um, or like a random encounter. Uh, I think that's a couple of other good reasons to um, use this sort of thing as well. So, um, so uh, I want to thank everybody for. Uh, oh, hey! Don't forget about Scott. Oh, wait! I already. Frank, 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 Frank is typing in chat. He forgot that Scott already had his thought. I already. Oh, forgot. I forgot to. Oh my God! See, I have a better memory than both you suckers. Oh, God, give me a heart attack, man. Uh, hey, I survived my first time out hosting this show. Holy mackerel. We're going to kill you off screen. Don't worry. <laughs> this uh, is going to get a lot worse here soon. <laughs> you might want to keep the cameras yeah. rolling as long as you can. <laughs> no, that's okay. It is. Hey, I, hey, I did good on time, too. Um, so I, you're four minutes over. Eh, it'll be it's getting close to five minutes over. Yeah, it'll be probably six Are you still before. talking? I think you should wrap. Kyle, shred it. I, I hear the producer saying, oh, no, it's already, it, it's already, never mind, too late. All right, hey, all right. So, so uh, 
I just want to make, of course, I want to mention that this weekend, of course, is our campaign weekend. And I said, and as I was thinking today, it's our campaign weekend where hopefully questions will be answered. We'll perpetual find out what happened to the academy and the fact that the headmaster is She dead. doesn't care. <laughs> well, Lucas and Dewey follow the path of good or jump into the chasm of evil. Since there was this very interesting um, thing going on between the two where Lucas just wanted to be a Watch the episode. Watch the episode. <laughs> Keep going, Carol. Keep going. Don't get caught up. Uh, now we get five minutes. Well, ah, I, damn it. <laughs> will I ever find out what the deal is with Cola? And I'm kind of hoping so. And will I ever be busy and caffeinated? Stolen instrument on Carol. <laughs> you've got it and I don't. So there's something you can't pin on me right now. Just uh, because they haven't frisked you yet doesn't mean I can't slip it into your belongings. It's too, you're not with me. Granted, maybe you're yes. all that's yes. on with Donald, but you're not with me right now. And I'm planning on having this conversation before I get to you all. And We're pushing this to question, six minutes now. Hey, maybe you would all shut up and stop talking. You know? <laughs> oh, 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 hang on, hang on. I, I think I just heard a challenge thrown down. <laughs> I believe we are saving this moment and just hey. going to keep replaying this over and over again. Bye, bye. So, please, please. As I said, actually, I can project over the two of you suckers. So, And I said, the last question, of course, is where in the world is my knees? Nobody Fathering knows. Hob Fathering hobgoblin hybrids. <laughs> Probably. And of course, the final question is who will win the dice? Because of course, if you follow us on Twitter and it. tweet the contest tweet, you could win some dice and they'll be announced on Saturday. Of course, follow us on Twitch, subscribe to us on YouTube and you'll get all the latest shenanigans. Twitter. Uh, thank you all for watching. Twitter, uh, Twitter, Twitter. Don't forget about Twitter, Carol. I, I didn't say no, she said Twitch. I did both. Or she forgot Twitch. Oh. I don't remember anymore. <laughs> it's been seven minutes, Carol. Come on. You know, it has been getting a little bit itchy back there. Will the elephant that Kyle, that, or will, will the elephant that, that, that Taryn was birthed hey, from wait, wait, ever, ever thing that child is a thumb? Kill me if I don't announce it. Okay, so. Uh, Thanks everyone for watching. And if you want to see it at one of our games and play with these awesome people, even if you're a new player or never streamed before, don't let that stop you. We said, in spite of how they appear, they're actually- I'm the only one that's killed new people. What? Hey, I've, I've killed, killed you. you. I killed you in our <laughs> first session, Blake. I said new people. I said new people. No, uh, just, you know, all you have to do is ask, find our, once again, find us on, Twitter, and you can just DM us there. Uh, so, and everybody, everybody now, it's time to do the wave. All right. You didn't kill me, Kyle. You got thrown into the fort. You got thrown into the field. <laughs>